God bless you. God bless you. I bless you. Oh, yes, I. Reverend Dr. K.E. Holmes, I bless you. But I want you to know God has blessed you. He has blessed you. And that's um, leaders, uh, novices, and all in between and all, all the way up. Now, if you tune into me often, if you have or if you're going to, I'm going to let you know something and you're going to hear me say it. I'm going to use a metaphor a million times, 10 million times. You're going to hear me say it till Jesus comes. And, you're, and each time I say it, I've learned from God that when he repeats himself, he's given you an, a new aspect of a thing. And also about God repeating himself is that that takes it further into the must be, the must, that that's the way it's going to be and it's not going to be another way. It takes it in to make sure that you follow it, you do it, okay? Now... I didn't know this doesn't mean it wasn't true all along, but God has me repeat, repeat, repeat until I think I need a record, a a press, press play button on me, you know, because I say it over and over and over. The thing of it is over and over and over to different generations, to different aspects, to different this and different that, to different times, you person of excellence you people of excellence, and I hope you noticed that I said people, but I did this, making a round like the globe, because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. People of excellence, I will remind you of this, and when you want to look up, look it up, um, valor, look up, if you use King James, look up valor. Uh, you'll more see that it is the stories of what the people of valor do. Take notice of not only what they do, how they do it. To use an expression of my times is that they think out of the box. They move and do things uh, in a moment in time and outdo what the best of the best do and get it done. You're a person of excellence. You're a person of excellence. You're people of excellence. Now, the other thing that I will tell you over and over and over and over and over is that people of excellence, you don't see the nose on your face. And then if you try to see the nose on your face, watch me, watch me, watch me. Do I look like I have good sense, much less person of excellence? Much less a person with three doctorates trying to see the nose on my face. No, that's not what you need to do. You don't need to see you. You need to know you through the spirit of God. Through Now, and when I see spirit of God, I'm going to go back and, and, and show you something for you to hold on to, to make a pillar in yourself and a principle in yourself so that you can walk in the excellence that not only you were called to, but the excellence that you came here into the planet as. And that's no matter when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you haven't accepted him yet, right now, the reason why you tuned in here, the reason why even if you it was accidental, even if your rear end hit something accidental or your dog stepped on something accidental, you're tuned in here because you're a person of excellence and you're necessary in the earth at this time right now. And people of excellence, this will resonate with your spirit. You go through stuff that doesn't even make sense. And you go through more stuff that not only does what you're going through make sense, but then you go through other stuff. It looks like you shouldn't have to have to deal with that. And then you go through other stuff that there's way more stuff, more important than that. But then you got to stop and deal with this, like that your dog stepped on the, the remote or something. And, and yet you're dealing with the roof caving in or, or s- someone necessary to open the door to is at the door. 
People of excellence, you deal with trials and situations that are ridiculous. You deal with what shouldn't even be happening in the earth. And most of the time you recognize it, whether it's cruelty, whether it's principles, whether it's no principles, whether it's yourself, your family, or others. Now, I want to give you all the scriptures for that. But part of why you don't recognize it in the scriptures is because you're always going through so much. And then when the peace comes, you need to relax in that peace so much and you don't need that other stuff on your mind. No, you don't. However, and part of why you don't need it on your mind is because you need to know things. But you need to know. And then when it's time for you to move, it's outside of and other than what you know. You're the template. You're the mentor. Okay? Now, the scriptures to get it from, when you look up men of valor, it's telling you we tend to read it as the story instead of recognizing that I'm like that. Or, yeah, that you even understand that. Okay? And I'm not talking about understanding the word of God. I'm talking about understanding being like that. And I will remind you to look it up that David, he had an army of excellence. Now that's excellence compared to the other armies in the world. Excellence according to. I don't even like to say compared to because God doesn't want us comparing. You still need to know who you are, what you have, where you are in relation to. But even to say it that way, you're not related to everything. And then when you are related, it's not necessarily for all of time. I like to do the first communion to, to show some principles there. Uh, Genesis, Genesis 14, the first communion will, where God gave Mel- Melchizedek two separate revelations of God that he hadn't had, <clears throat> two uh, high priestly and prophetic uh, mantles. And one of the things that we as churchianity, and I'd like to let you know that that's my term for Christian things that have gone wayward in principles we don't like it we, we we like it that Jesus said to the Sadducees and the Pharisees that you you make the word of God of no effect that's what I'm talking about when I say churchianity the thing of it is that when we Christians hear Sadducee and Pharisee then we make it the Jews the Jews I'm letting you know when I say churchianity, I'm talking about us being Sadducees and Pharisees. We want, I'm talking about us as leaders. We want, we want to make it so that we follow the word so good that we make rules and then we follow the rules more than we follow the word. And then we don't let God grow us in what we did learn about the rules. Yes, if God taught you, and and I will use a real life example that uh, if God taught you, that people don't come into your church and come into your space and just prophesy off the cuff. Just prophesy. They need to come up to and get permission and da-da-da-da-da. And you know that you got that from, from uh, what is it, 1 Corinthians? Second, oh, well, 2 Corinthians. I don't want to change it from here. I'll forget to go through here. That you know that God... I'll tell you, First or Second Corinthians 14, where he says that everyone can prophesy, but, but let him, uh, let, let the others judge, so that you take it from that. So that's scripture, that's word. And then now you go into another place and another church, and they don't do it that way. And as far as you're concerned, well, you got it from the word, and it's the spirit of God who showed you that, so they're not doing it right. Here's another thing that I remind you of often. You look at the book of Revelation, the, uh, the seven churches, each one of them had a different revelation of Jesus Christ. And of the, of the five that Jesus rebuked, he didn't rebuke them about their revelation. We rebuke each other about them. 
We read, yes, I said it. We rebuke each other. I'm not talking about novices or someone of the different denomination, and that's that's carnal. Go to 1 Corinthians 3, and God says, I'm a Paul, I'm a Cephas. He tells you it's carnal. I didn't say the whole thing. I'm telling you where to go to find it. He tells you that's carnal. And some of us are so proud of our denomination. Because we know that God revealed this. That's that's right. I want you to know that each of the churches of the book of Revelation had a different revelation of Jesus Christ. And I'll remind you that in the first chapter, and since I'm, I'm saying it, I, I, I mind going there because I get theological and then want to go and explain the whole thing. And what I really want to show you is that this, that, and the other thing. I, I really want to go there on that. And when I go exactly to the scripture that I'm talking about, I, I tend to go theological and teach on that thing. And uh, that's that's good in one sense. And... I'm I'm laughing at me because I'm remembering how that when I first came to the Lord and I now I know that this was God. The person that brought me to the Lord handed me a Bible, and at the time, Schofield Reference Bible was was the popular Bible of the day. But that person handed me a Bible that was just a book, no references, no none of that. And I'm laughing at me now because. While I love study materials, I absolutely love to study with study materials. I, um, I'm i still so used to just the word. However, the book of Revelation, I don't even know what... what um, this is chapter 1. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, okay? Which... God gave to him. Now, I'm I'm a person who, my husband and I, we raised our children. You don't say what somebody said. If, if somebody told you, somebody said, you wait. You don't stop to hear that. Now, I'm talking about us as human beings. You overheard something, you let God tell you about what you overheard, okay? However, when it comes to people, you don't let somebody tell you somebody said. And I'm not talking about in rule, because I'm going to go to the first time, uh, Exodus 31, 3. I'm going to go to the first time that the, anybody was filled with the Spirit of God. You want to be able to hear from that person. You want to be able to hear what God told them. However, man dealing with man, and that's churchianity man, Christianity man, whatever. However... When it comes to God, Jesus said, I only say what the Father said. I only say what I heard the Father say. And then he told you to hear the Spirit because he's going to tell you whatever I said, okay? And that's where man got that thing from, saying what somebody else said. The thing of it is, fallen man messes that up so much that, like I said, my husband and I raised our children that you don't, when somebody wants to tell you that so-and-so said, uh-uh, you wait till God brings you so-and-so so that you hear what so-and-so said. However, the principle of hearing from someone so that you hear truth, we want to move in, the, in God's principle, not man. Adam, fallen Adam especially, not humanity, not even good intentions. But that precept came from God. This, now John's writing it, this is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him. Now we know God gave us the word, but he's letting us know Here's how this process works. Here's how this works out. Here's the development of it. I'm letting you know, people of excellence, God gives you to walk in a thing and to walk in it at another level and depth on the spur of the moment, in the instance of time, in the middle of teaching, in the middle of prophecies and what's going on. 
and you know this in your spirit, pardon me, in your soul, you know this in your spirit and you know this in your mind. You know this in the revelation that God has already given to you. You know this in your praise and yet in the walking of it at the here and now. God is causing all of that to come together. That even the time it just took me to say that. He does it in less than a blink of the eye. And I winked. I'm talking about a blink, a flash of light. This is the revelation from Jesus Christ. Here's the process. Which God gave him concerning the events that will happen soon. I don't even know what, which revelate what, what, um, anyway. That will happen soon. When I first got saved, I'm like, God, you said soon, and it's been 2,000 years already. How do you call that soon? And God, I I'm not, don't want to give you the testimony of me, how God taught me about what soon is. Anyway, the angel was sent to God's servant. Now, here's somebody else, someone else in there. And yet, someone like me knows the scripture where, and it's scripture. That if an angel reveals something to you that's contrary to this gospel, you don't listen. You don't listen to that. Not even if an angel. Okay. And how many of us, we ought to be, we ought to be used to angels speaking to us. However, they only speak the word of God. But most of us, when we pray, even listen in, in, no matter what denomination you are, listen to any, any people of prayer, churchianity, leaders, no matter what. We're talking to God, or we're speaking through Jesus Christ, and then all of a sudden we're talking to the devil. The devil, 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 the devil. We refer so much to the devil. Listen. In the re- this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, where our minds need to be, where our hearts need to be. He's the one who said, Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him concerning the events that will happen soon. God's letting you know what's going on. Guess what? There's prophet liars. And that's, I'm not talking about false prophets. No, false prophets are false prophets. They're not even of God, from God, with God. But there's prophet liars. I'm talking about people of God who lie and they are prophets of God. The first time that God ever called anybody a prophet in the word. Look it up. Not only had he lied, but he was causing devastating he was causing an entire nation that was going to be judged he was causing an entire nation to be demised without even going to war because of his lie if you're a prophet of God you it, it ought to pardon me it ought to frighten you out of lying It ought to frighten you into making sure that you're saying what God said without your interpretation of the matter. Uh, And uh, uh, not that it matters to you, but I'm scared of me on that one. Because I understand when God gives me revelation of stuff. And I also understand, I, I, I told you I love to study, love to study. Have three doctorates and I know it's all dumb. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you that the stuff we study in the way, thank you so much. The stuff you handed a tissue. That is a man of God, a person of excellence, beyond excellence, that even he, looking at the nose on his face, would look like he's dumb, stupid, and crazy. And he's the excellent of the excellent. And and yet, just kindness, but also your kindness to, to even be kind to a prophet causes like ripples in the water. It causes an array, not only a rainbow, but like the ripples of the water, different dimensions because water is one thing and air is something and light is something else. 
it causes a ray of blessing in the areas, depth, and dimensions that you are anointed for. And I mean that gentleman in particular, that leader in particular, of what you're anointed for and appointed to and dealing with at the time. Remember I said people of excellence, you go through stuff that doesn't even make sense, stuff that shouldn't even be happening in the earth, and yet to the simple kindness and paying attention and there. He's got a lot that he should be paying attention to and is, and yet comes with this kindness because I sneezed. Amen. Yeah. And it's not just, it's kindness, human kindness, because what that does, it also displaces, we have the saying in our times right now, I don't care. And, and we don't mean that I do not care. And yet we're in a time that the more we put that out in sound, the more we put that out in the air, the more that we put those words out, it puts out the not caring. And that act of kindness helps bring that down. More to it, more to it than that. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I want you to know, people of excellence, the things that we do, just that we do that anybody would do. I often tell the story of... A, of um. Uh, I was in the store to buy something this decades ago. In the store to buy something, and the lady was the young lady came in and she's buying something, and she didn't have enough money for diapers, so I just paid for them. And I mean, you know, because to me anybody would, you know, you've got it, you you do. And uh, years later, I met her, uh, or she saw me, and she started telling me and thanking me and thanking me and 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 showing me that this is the son, and he was. Uh, almost grown now, um, and that the diapers that I bought way back when at that store, and it was still there at the time, uh, anybody would have done that is how I thought of. That didn't mean all that, but it changed her life. It caused it to cause her children, but also that son in particular that they, those diapers were for, caused his life to be totally different than it would have been, caused her to make a total different decision. She was about to make a decision that was going to change your life for the worse. Or time, okay? We don't stop to think about that. And so I'm letting you know, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him concerning the events that will happen soon. Now, there's other things in here, the revelation that God gave to him, that aren't about the, the events that will happen soon. And yet it talks about it. It mentions it, who he is, how he is, and the depths and dimension. And, and the position of who he is. And uh, an angel was sent to God's servant, John, so that John could share the revelation with God's other servants. And most of us don't even pay attention. It didn't say Jesus' other servants. And Jesus talked to the disciples about servant of the master and this and that and we don't even catch that servant of God servant of Jesus Christ those are different aspects of servanthood we don't even catch that we should we should because it's in Ephesians and most of us like to take it from Romans and wonder why we don't have it straight because we're so busy saying it's the word it's the word it's the word he explains it in Ephesians and he told us in in Revelation who is he that Descended that also ascended. Look it up in case I said it backwards. And then in in Ephesians, he let us know that he descended, that he also ascended, and gives gifts unto men. And that's not the charismatic gifts, that's Dorian, which we like to call deacons. And we put deacons in a box that's much smaller than what we see over there in Ephesians. Now, I want you to see this. John faithfully reported the word of God. I, I skipped a line. Go back and read it because I, I did skip a line. An angel was sent to God's servant, John, so that John could share the revelation with God's other servants. Okay? God's other servants. Not lesser, not more. God's other servants. Now, some of them are lesser. Some of them are more. Some of them are equal. John faithfully reported the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Everything he saw. Now, uh, we don't. I haven't heard it so much lately, but there was a time we were going through when God says all, he means all. God means all. And 
the problem with that is that when God shows you the context that he's talking in, then when we go teaching, meaning well, we mean well. When we go teach, all means all. So that if I say all of these things here, all of these pencils, I'm not talking about every pencil in the, in the whole room, in the whole studio. I'm talking about all the pencils that are here. I've given the context. But when we go through all means all, then we miss things like he said, John reported everything. Right in the book, there's going to be some things that God says, don't write that. Don't write that. So if we say everything means everything, and then that gives somebody over there who, who, and I'm going to use scripture here for those of you that recognize it, who say that, see, God contradicts himself. God's word contradicts itself. And and I hope you don't lose what I'm saying to you. Why I'm even going here is I was I'm not going to finish because I want to get to what I wanted to show you. All of these things, they all go on at the same time. And God has called us and appointed us for the times that we live in, but also other times to undo things of past times and to prepare for coming times to make it so that we don't fall into errors of other times a few years ago we were dealing with um uh, fault lines and and uh, sinkholes and stuff those sink- sinkholes didn't just start there when they started there but they were discovered when something fell through a car fell through or or a whole something collapses that sinkhole was there before And if we understood things about the times and things, read things in the word, read things in the word and believe God's word and don't throw different portions out because of our, when God says everything, when God says all, okay? When God gives us the context of a thing. So, here, in the first chapter, he gives, to use the vernacular of our time, a head-to-toe description of Jesus Christ. It's not an all and everything description of Jesus Christ, but it is a head to toe. And yet, the different churches, the seven churches, they didn't have even this head to toe revelation of Jesus. And Jesus didn't rebuke them for it. Doesn't mean that they shouldn't have had it. Now, keep that in mind. And I want to take you back to first time that God filled anybody with the spirit of God there's a principle that's known it's in God's word uh, but it's taught in in schools and whatnot in Sunday school as if it's a man's principle it's a God principle that the first time God mentions a thing that's the nucleus of it that's the core of it every time you see it any time you see it so that when God shows you more, remember he's building a house, when God builds more, not only is there a foundation, when God shows you how to do a foundation, everything isn't a foundation, you build more. When you're building a house, you're not just building a room, and maybe you are only just building a room. You're doing what God has given you to do, okay? And if he's shown you how to do foundation, he's shown you how to do foundation. If he's shown you how to do sealing, he's shown you how to do sealing. And to hear about that revelation of Jesus Christ, that there's a head-to-toe revelation of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, in the very first chapter, and each of the churches had a different revelation. Or what if you have the revelation of how to do foundations, and your brother, three churches over, or three denominations over, he has the revelation of how to do not only the roof, but the chimney. And... Did you ever notice every house doesn't have a chimney? Does that make them wrong? No, what's wrong is what was what he said is wrong. So that, and then you get to notice that he didn't rebuke every single church. And then the thing I always want you to remember is that he who has an ear, first of all, you've got to have an ear. You don't even know what that means to have an ear if you didn't learn it from the old covenant. You get an idea, but when we come to it in the new covenant, he's already given us so much of what that means already. In the new covenant, we find out that this old stuff was uh, 
not old. It was the schoolmaster. It was the ABCs. It was the preschool and the elementary for what God's bringing you to. Going back to the example of if you know how to build a foundation, you're not building a foundation just to have a foundation. And yet in Hebrews, he, t- he talks about going on to perfection. Hebrews 6, I, had, I do a whole course on it. Oh, Lord. So I want you to see the first time God mentions a thing, like I said, the first time God mentioned a prophet, it was his man that he called out. And he lied. And his lie was costing, costing more than. And he told the king, talk about politics. He told the king. He needs to pray for you. Now, we just got finished going through throwing out everything of a person when we found out some things about him that were ungodly. So that the difference that he made in the times and across cultures and understandings and misunderstandings, we threw it out. And we're making it so that if you look up that name, that man's name, we automatically disdain it. And there's word on that, that a man's righteousness won't be remembered. And if you're the one to hold it, if you're the one to have taken it and move it in truth, it can't be because you threw it out. Now, the first time that God mentions filling anyone with the Spirit. So uh, understand that what I'm showing you here, these, this that he does here, that's with the filling of the Spirit. And, And I didn't say filling of the Holy Ghost. Because that phrase, he begins to teach us later. Exodus 31.3. Actually, I'm going to start at one. And the Lord, that is Yahweh, Yahweh, the Lord. When you say Lord, see Lord in all caps, it's Yahweh. That's God of covenant in particular. Dealing with man in particular. So that he doesn't have to go back and teach you how he taught you all of that from the beginning. I have a whole course on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I show you that from Genesis. So, and Yahweh spake. And when he speaks, his speaking does a certain kind of something. And he's already taught us that. Unto Moses. And even that. Okay. Saying. See. Now, he spoke so that you hear. And he's telling you, see. Different depth and dimensions. I have called by name. There's so much I want to show you. Uh, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the the son of her. Oh, there's so much just in that. <coughs> of the tribe of Judah. But here is the the thing that I want to bring to you. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God. Okay? Now, first time you see anybody filled with the Spirit of God. And it is God who does it. He told it to the leader. And the leader of leaders, excellent of excellent, okay, above and beyond. And he says, Yahweh spoke. So this is covenant, ratifier of covenant. He speaks. And God has already taught us that when you speaking is the creation, bringing in something that that isn't already. Saying so that it is to continue. It is something that needs to be built. It's a process like the foundation. And then I'm not a house builder like that. And then the next thing that goes on top of that, and then what goes on top of that, and the floor, and then the walls, and this and that. Saying has all of that to it. We don't think of that as we're moving in the thing that God has given us. But all of that is going on. And when I tell you that God has anointed you, appointed you, and equipped you, I'm talking about all of that in any, any aspect of the anointed, of the appointed, and of the equipped. And that isn't all the depths and dimensions of everything. 
and 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 even just now i just left out some of it when you look at ephesians and he talks about what is in the love of god he talks depth breadth length and height and that is in a particular order now though he didn't give the revelation of that in that order until that particular place in ephesians i'm speaking of the whole of that and the aspects of that he gave all along. And here, we, most of the time, we think God's just repeating himself. He's given us another aspect of a thing that we're supposed to know and move in. And yeah, you know it. Sometimes it's in your soul so that you can't help but do it. Like when, though he's head of the household, though he's head of the studio, though he's head of, 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 of the business, Though he's head of ministry, given the tissue, because I sneezed, it goes into all those different areas of the love of God, height, length, depth, and breadth. And it goes into all those different areas of saying, whether it's the foundation, the walls, the ceiling, the roof, or the fact that there's a chimney or that there isn't a chimney and what that is supposed to produce and how you do it when something is and when something is not. Because when you deal with times, some things exist in times. Some ideologies and philosophies exist in times that don't exist in other times. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Just one example is when the whole world thought that the world was flat. And it took Christopher Columbus to see in I in uh, Isaiah that God sits on the circuit of and circuit that's not flat. And now we know, no, the world's not flat. But the whole world believed it. It wasn't true. Just because a whole bunch of people believe a thing and believe it together doesn't make it true. Anyway, anyway. I have filled. This is the first time God talks about filling. I want you to know God's principle. I have filled him. With the spirit of God. Now that's the spirit of Elohim. God has already taught us about Elohim. Is the one who created. And Elohim. Continues creating while we see. The spirit of God. Hovering over the face of the deep. And go looking in case I said it wrong. Because sometimes I say the face of the waters. And the face of the deep. And they're two separate things. But one of the things that I want you to see. That the Holy Spirit does. Is that he hovered over. And that hovering is like uh, a, 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 a hen sitting on, on eggs to hatch. While God speaks 34 times, Elohim said, Elohim said, Elohim did, while creation is going on. I want you to understand that being full of the Spirit of God doesn't mean you get all involved with everything that's going on, even though it's going on. It is going on. We, we, if we haven't learned it, We're living in times where there is so much going on. And those who are anointed and appointed doesn't mean that those who aren't anointed and aren't appointed aren't going on as well. We need to move in what we're given to move in because we're going to come up against that. Or we're going to be there for people and the revelation of a thing and putting it in the mind or putting it in the soul or putting it in the heart of man and it'll be there. And then when that other thing comes of that person who prophesies, and, and did you catch the difference between the false prophet that I was letting you know and the prophet liar? Because I know we like to call Balaam a false prophet. God didn't call him a false prophet. And most of us don't even recognize every Christmas we take one of the revelations that God had given him and we use it every single Christmas because what he prophesied was truth. Because he was God's prophet. And that's why even though he was a greedy prophet, yeah, there are people of God who are greedy. Mm -hmm. And it's costly when you're greedy. And some of you that convicted you right there. And some of you are greedy for money and other of you are greedy for recognition. Greedy for position. Greedy for being recognized. And then some of you are greedy for, I need need to be sure. You second guess yourself so much you can't even move in what God did show you. 
And you're in the way of somebody who's anointed and appointed for something who's not going to move you out of the way because they know that when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he exalts you. And that makes it so that you don't always recognize when you need to kick somebody out or move somebody out by the spirit of God. And not because kicking doesn't feel good or because some people won't move if they're not kicked out. Okay, so he filled him with the spirit of God. Now watch this. In wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Now, we love that because when we love to just study the gifts of the Spirit, which we don't even do according to the way God separates it in his word. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. And we like to keep those three together because we know that they go together. Except for that we leave off that when being filled with the Spirit of God, all manner of workmanship, expertise in your area. This man is has expertise in how to run a studio. He has expertise in being a father of people of excellence, and in particular daughters. That's a whole other aspect of things. I always bring it to you. I think it's uh, uh, 27 or 7 of Proverbs. Call uh, wisdom your sister and understanding your kinswoman. Because things in a feminine have a different effect and aspect and bring in different things at a different time and level that the masculine does not. It doesn't mean that the masculine is better than the feminine and the feminine is better than the masculine. But in certain circumstances, yes, it is. Now, filled with the Spirit of God, first mention of it, so that understand that with that is in wisdom... And look it up and see if it's in the Hebrew. You don't have to know Hebrew to know is the conjunction there. I let you know that when it's in the Hebrew, it's like an iron link, an iron chain. That it's just with that. So that if that chain is loosened, you're not complete and you're going to have some trouble for in whatever area is missing. And right now, because I'm saying wisdom, in Ecclesiastes, he lets you know wisdom is profitable to direct. So that we deal in the gifts of gifts of the spirit, and we and we haven't even learned it from the old covenant to know that um, the word of wisdom it's going to give direction. The word of knowledge, it's going to, it's going to sharpen the axe. If you don't sharpen the axe, you need to use more strength. It's gonna it's gonna make it so that you, it takes more work. You need to know some stuff. Filled with the spirit of God. You've got the knowledge, the how-to. And that's when you don't think you already have the knowledge. Because when you look, if you've never seen um, holes before, it'll come to you that you need to drill that hole before you put that, that thing in that hole. You don't just keep go hammering if you, do, if you don't have the knowledge, if you don't wet the axe, you need to use more strength takes more time and what if you don't have all that time like Mordecai told Esther you know what if you're here for such a time as this you don't have all day you don't have all week you don't have all month you don't have a few years and since I mentioned that go to Esther 8 3 where he says read the whole verse but I want to refer you to the portion of it that Mordecai was known among the kings. He made history. Some of you people of excellence, you're making history. You don't even know it. You're not even trying to make history. You don't see the nose on your face and you're not doing that. You're not. No. But what you're doing and what God has ordained is this needs to go down in history so that it changes that the whole world thinks that the world is flat. In history, it is known not only that the world is not flat, but it's round, but it is known and understood that the whole world can think something and it not be true and it be costly untruth. Not because somebody, oh, anyway. 
in wisdom filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge in all manner of workmanship. Yeah. And then watch this because the the chapter verses weren't there until the 14th century. Pardon me, I might be saying that wrong. Chapter divisions were the 12th century. Verse divisions were the 14th century. Either way you get what I'm telling you is that that's way later from when God said this, when he gave the revelation of this. And I have filled him. Remember what he said in Revelation? That the, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave to him, God's that you know where this came from in the process that it came. Not to, not to get stuck on it, but to know and understand it. So that when you're anointed and appointed, you just move. When you walk, you're not thinking, oh, right, right foot. Oh, oh, left foot. Oh, right, left. No, you just walk right, left, right, left. And you walk. And then you're not so busy concentrating on walking that you're not getting to where you're going. And you're not getting done what you went to do because you know uh right foot left foot right foot left foot or because you know even the principle of rhythm right left right left now watch to devise cunning works we we tend in our day and time and actually for the few hundred years the word cunning it's for people that are evil and for people are are good and right cunning has to do with that ability to think and figure and know and understand cunning works works in gold in silver and brass oh my goodness I don't need to have my my mind on gold I don't need to have my mind on silver I don't need to have my mind on money 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 The Spirit of God filled you. Some of you are appointed for the economics of the times. And you keep not stepping up like Moses. And it might cost like it did when Moses. Because God God told Moses, I made you a God to Pharaoh. God told Moses that he's, you're my prophet. But when Moses wouldn't step up, God says, see, here's your brother. He's your prophet. When you leave something to somebody else because you won't step up to be in the person of excellence that you are and you know that you are but everything isn't adding up the way that you want it to add up or the way that you know that it should. If I'm that good, then how come everybody's against me? I'll tell you why. Because when you're the excellent of the excellent, the way human beings are, we don't mind when you're good but we don't like it when you're that good. And then we were always challenging you and looking for you to prove it. And then when your good is challenging my good, I'm going to sit you down and put you down. Because I have the authority to sit you down and put you down. When you look at Jesus Christ or even Paul, when you look at Jesus Christ, it was the high priest. God appointed the high priest for life. And it was the high priest that came against what God was doing. The high priest who God appointed for life. When Jesus walked the earth, the high priest was a Sadducee. Did you hear me? Didn't even believe in resurrection and angels. It's an angel that came and told Mary, his mother, that she'll be the high priest appointed of God for life. Was in what we call a denomination. We like to call it a sect, okay? Um... Because we don't like to think of that the Hebrews have different denominations. We understand denominations. And that's why I remind you of, of uh, I'm pretty sure it's 1 Corinthians 3. Are you not carnal? Some say of, I'm of Paul, some I'm of Cephas, some of I'm of Apollos. Putting yourself under a different way. And they were different. They weren't like each other. God testifies of Apollos that he was eloquent. Some of us like to hear from somebody who sounds like they're intelligent. 
And others of us want to hear from somebody who is full of vigor. Like, like Peter. So full that he's going to rebuke Jesus. That oh no, it can't be like that. That Jesus had to rebuke him. So full of, I heard what he said. He said, get your, your, your sword and cut off the high priest's uh, servant's ear. When they were coming for Jesus. Because he knew they had no business coming for Jesus. That's right. Except for that these are the times. This is what happens in this time. Some of us are so full of that that just indignation. And some of us are like Paul. We water, we water. We, 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 we root, we root, we root. And everything, just because it should be rooted, doesn't mean that the ground is prepared like it's supposed to be prepared. But if I don't root what should be rooted, it can't grow. And, and what if, what if you walk into the room and you see, oh, that's not growing like it should be. And just like, just to put the tissue down, you automatically move that while you're doing something else that's far more important. You move that to a place that it can be in the sun and get the sun that it needs or into a different pot that it can get the depth that it needs. And you just do it matter of factly because most of what you people of excellence do, you do it. Without thinking about it. Because the mind of God is what you move with. The heart of God is what you move with. And it's in your soul so that the word of God is there. So that like I was about to refer to in the first communion. There was a whole bunch of stuff going on and we most of us skipped the name so that we don't even recognize uh, because the names let you know how people deal and where they deal. And those names, some of that we would know how to deal with the homosexuality of the day because some of that lets you know that there was that kind of thing going on, not because you're not supposed to touch not, taste not, but because it lets you know that, oh, that's the people who Part of the people who came and took everybody away, my 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 uh, my nephew Lot, and it makes you automatically know without having to stop and think about it and figure it and check your checklist that the people like that they don't kill everybody. You see, there's some kings who they just automatically slaughter people, but of the kings who who went and 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 took. Lot away, they were just like where Lot chose to go, which also means that you attract that stuff, even though you don't want to move in that stuff, you still attract it, churchianity. However, just for you to know the information that they're going to keep them alive and keep them aside for their debauchery, you know, till they can have sex with them all the different kind of ways and do the operations or maybe save some so that we can use this one for this operation because we don't care about um, killing anybody as long as we can use that body part to transfer to that body part. You don't stop and have that checklist. But when you know the names, I'm letting you know, the names of people let you know how they are, who they are, and what kind of kingdom, what kind of rules they deal in and deal with. And so you don't have to be so worried that they're going to kill them. Now you need to rescue them right away. But when you know that that's who went and took them, then, oh. And and it's not for you to say, oh, I have time, so that you take your time. You don't need to take your time. It's so that the worryment that can come doesn't because the love that you have for your relative who made the wrong decision, and this is for you parents who have children who have gone into all kinds of things that just are not of God. You don't just leave them in the bed they made for themselves. No. The love ministers life. And you don't have to do a checklist of Oh, I got to train this, train that. The scriptures, you know that those were trained already in Abram's household. They were already trained. And then he joined with different ones that 
you wouldn't normally join in in politics and rules and went and rescued. And some of you will recognize that when Jesus in the new covenant tells us that I'm not drinking this till I drink it new with you in the kingdom, you're going to recognize he's, you're going to drink it new with him in the kingdom when Melchizedek gives him the bread and the wine, the first communion. You're going to recognize that Jesus is drinking it with you new in the kingdom, not just the marriage feast of the lamb. But when you bring, like Jesus said, I haven't lost anybody God gave me. I didn't even lose my knucklehead nephew who went to the wrong place and wouldn't even, okay? People of excellence, you deal with that kind of stuff where you need some kind of expertise. No, you don't. You need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And notice, in wisdom and in understanding. Oh, and I don't mean bleeding heart understanding. I'm talking about to know what the situation is. And knowledge and all manner of workmanship to get the job done. Now that's all different kinds of aspects of what's going on in our times. And that's knowing how you don't just call a prophet liar a false prophet just because you recognize it's a man or woman of God, but there's they're prophesying and part of it is true, but then they're giving their their um, interpretation to it that is not true. Or they're giving their interpretation to it that is the revelation of Jesus Christ the way it is in Laodicea. But it's different in Ephesus. That's why he says, he who has an ear, and we need to understand, that having an ear means that I can hear from God. It it also means that I can hear, understand, and know the kinds of things that are going on. I don't shut down I, don't, I know the difference between the false prophet and the prophet liar and the prophet of God and the one who's anointed for all manner of workmanship. Be filled with the Spirit of God. The times we are in require it. All times require it. But right now, for all manner of things that are going on, we need it. It's required. For all that's going on. 